Good evening, church, and good evening to those who are with us online. We're grateful that you joined with us and grateful to see y'all this evening. And uh, so thankful to be here on this beautiful, beautiful Lord's Day. I had uh, intended, and I I'd, I'd spoke a couple weeks ago that I wanted to try to go through Romans and hit some doctrinal points, but I, I had a change today. Uh, and I, 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 I just, my heart was, uh, I, I was thinking about so many of God's people that are going through difficult times. And I asked the Lord to help me that I could have a word of encouragement maybe to, to those that are having uh, difficult times. Which we know, we know. I mean, you could, uh, if everybody had a few minutes to tell, you could all, everybody has a story. Everybody has either you or somebody you love. Or if you haven't had any difficult times, just wait. <clears throat> wait, because they're, they're, they're coming. I'm not to be a bearer of bad news. or, But, uh, you know, I heard something uh, a few weeks ago from a wise uh, saint, I don't know who it was, but she made this statement. She said, I've walked long enough with the Lord where I don't know the difference between a blessing and a trial. It's pretty, pretty profound, isn't it? So that what it, it, it tells me that she has, through her walking with the Lord, each trial had become a blessing. And she'd learned to allow these trials to drive her into, into uh, the arms of the Lord, so to speak. And I just wanted to hopefully give you a word of encouragement of maybe the workings of God in, in your life and in my life. And I'll tell you, uh, it may be, I don't know the mind of the Lord, but it may be, I, I know if in Scripture, when you study the Scripture over and over again, God has a, a pattern, so to speak, where he, he deals with his people. He deals with nations. He brings, uh, thank God, I, t I tell you, I tell you, beloved, I, I hope this nation goes in the belly of the whale. I'm just telling you the truth. I do, because it's in the belly of the whale that Jonah cried out. And his voice cried out to God, and God heard his prayer. And it may, be, it may take the belly of the whale for this nation before we cry out to God for his delivering power and to see him work. So if you have your Bibles, if you would turn to Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54. And I, I will start with verse 11, okay? Will you pray with me first, please? Lord, thank you for this word. We ask you, Father, that you, with all of our heart, that you please help us to understand, Lord, what you're trying to do for us. Help us, Lord. Help us to be pliable. Help us to be teachable. Lord, help us not to ever be hard-hearted. Please, Lord, take any hardness away, <laughs> inability to receive what you're trying to tell us. We ask you to open our eyes to see, open our ears to hear. Father, we ask you that you'd help us now to receive what you will give us. And we're dependent. We have nothing. Lord, I have nothing in my heart, nothing of my own self that could benefit anyone. Please, Father, you have to come and give this word. With all of our heart, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The, uh, the first verse I want to read is uh, 5411. It says, O thou afflicted. Does that, mean, does that describe you? Now, the word afflicted, I'm, I'm, uh, the word afflicted is ani. And it means depressed in mind or circumstances. And it means to be to the point where you're, it, it gives the idea of your head is down. You ever seen anybody walk with their head down? 
the heaviness of uh, the heaviness that uh, makes the heart of man to stoop. The scripture says heaviness and oftentimes heaviness comes and uh, the head is down the shoulders slump. Yeah, I've been there many times and but you know I read here recently where when a Jew prayed, do you know where they looked? Up. The head was up. When Jesus prayed in, in John 17 to the Father, he lifted his eyes to the heavens and spoke to the Father. He lifted his eyes. So a Jew to pray would not... So, so for someone to have their head down, a child of God, this, that's what all need. That's what afflicted is. It's, it's the one who... The heaviness of the heart has caused his head to be down, and to uh, because of circumstances. So it's to this person who's afflicted that this word comes, and the Lord is saying through the prophet Isaiah, "O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not comforted." Now he gives a promise, and I just want to give a few little points. <coughs> Uh, on this scripture. So the, the, the one who is not comforted, who's afflicted and tossed with tempest, the Lord says, I'm going to do something. And as, as a builder all my life, this really hit me hard because the Lord uses a description of a building to, to describe what he's going to do to this believer. Or you could, if you want to say corporately, to, to the church, to individuals, to nations. Uh, he says, I'm going to do something. And he begins where, where every good structure begins with a foundation. You see? Didn't Jesus say that those who hear his word and do it are like a wise man who built his foundation upon a rock? Right? But this foundation is a little bit different. He, look what he says. He said, now, to, to this person who's afflicted and tossed, whose head is down, not comforted, behold, and, and, and look at that word behold. The Lord is saying, I want you to look at something here. I want you to behold something because I am going to do something. This is God speaking. This is, God, this is the God of heaven. The, God, the Lord of our salvation has says, I'm going to do something to that one who's afflicted. To, to, to that one who is, is down. I, I'm going to. In fact. In, if you would have it. He's doing it. The, just the fact that you're in affliction. Means he's working. Does that make sense? So you got you to drop back and think. He's already doing it. If you're in affliction. If you, if you feel like you're in that spot. Or so, God is, he's already there. He's already working. He's already allowed it. And what he's doing, he says what he's doing. He said, I will lay thy stones. So the Lord is telling us here, I am going to, in, when you look up the word stones, it means the foundation stones. We pour walls these days, but in the old days you laid block. And before that you laid rocks, you see. And... You would lay, they tell me that in the temple at Jerusalem, the rocks fit so well, the stones, you couldn't put a knife blade in between them. They, 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 were, they were hewn so perfectly well. So your masons back then, they knew how to cut rock. They knew how to cut stone. And the, but here's the Lord. He's saying, I'm going to lay these. I'm going to lay these stones. In other words, I'm... For the one who's tossed and afflicted, I'm at work and I am laying a foundation in your life and I'm doing it. I'm, in fact, I'm building something in your life that will be substantial, that will be strong enough. And I, if you'll have it, the Lord is saying, I'm doing it. If you'll just let me work, I am laying your foundation for you. And then he goes on to describe these stones with fair colors. Now, I don't, I don't lay, our foundations are pretty blah looking. I've never seen anybody come by the job and say, that's the best looking foundation. 
That's the most beautiful foundation I've ever seen. Now, we, we do a rock veneer sometimes, and, but the foundation is maybe the least looked upon part of the whole job. You don't take people and say, let's look at my foundation today, you see. But Jesus has said, or our Father, or the Lord is saying, I'm going to lay your foundation with, and here's what it hits, here's what it's saying to me. It will be something for people to behold, you see. In other words, the foundation that I'm laying in your life will be laid with fair colors. It will be something for people to see. We talked about it in Sunday school this morning in, in, in Psalm chapter 40, verse 3, where David said, He brought me out, out of a, a, a pit, a noisy pit, and a, and a miry clay. He set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. He's put a new song in my mouth. Many will see it. Many will see it. You see, when, when you go through afflictions and God is working in your life and He's laying these stones, He's doing it. You've you got a ministry for others. Your life touches others. It's, it's viewed by others. You have to keep that in your mind. If not, you get so self-centered, you lose what God is doing. I love to watch a mason work. There's a lot of bricklayers. Ain't a lot of masons anymore. That's the truth. You know, do, you, do you know that guys... It isn't true. These guys can slop the brick in there, but it's horrible. It's, it's awful. I've run them off. I, I, I mean, it's, you wouldn't believe it. But a good mason will take his time. He'll tweak that brick. He'll level every one. He'll tap it. And it, it's dead on it. A good mason. And see, the Lord is the best mason. And it doesn't matter how long it takes for him to get that one stone right, you see. He'll do it. He'll tap it. I've seen, I've seen a good mason tear it back down. Take it out. Throw it away. Put another one in there. You see? So the Lord is, is, is making a foundation. He's laying, he's laying your foundation with fair colors, which means when you look it up, look, look up these words. It, it has something to do with the eyes, and it's for something for others to behold. He'll lay your stones and lay thy foundations with sapphires. That doesn't make sense. Why would you put a sapphire in a foundation? It don't make a lick of sense to me. A sapphire stone, isn't it a pretty blue stone, Jim? But when you look up the meaning of it, this is, but, but I got to back up. When he says, I'm going to lay the foundation, the word is yasad. This is what really hit me. It means to sit intensively. It means to sit down together to counsel and establish. You get that? It's amazing. When you look at the, the meaning of these words, the Lord says, My found, the foundation I'm laying, I'm not doing it without counseling you. If you'll listen, I'm, I'm teaching you here. I'm, I'm teaching you something as I'm laying the foundation in your life. Go to uh, 1 Peter. Just hold your spot. Go to 1 Peter. It means, uh, the word yasad means to take counsel and establish. First Peter chapter 5. Let's see, the verse I'm looking for is 10. Somebody read it loud. See that established? See there? So here's the person. Here's the person that's in in the difficult time. That person that's tossed with tempest and not comforted. The Lord says it's only a short time. He said, "But I'm laying. I'm establishing you. If you'll, for I will. When you come out of this thing, your foundation will be laid. It will be established, and you will grow. It will be a teaching. You see." So now he goes, for some reason, he goes from the foundation to the windows. And I don't understand that. That's not, but the Lord's ways are so far above our ways. He's describing this structure. And God takes, 
his focus first on the foundation, but then he goes right to the windows of it. And he said, I'm going to make your windows of agates. And the word windows, it means, the word is shemesh, and it means to be brilliant. And it means to let the sun, it's a way for light to enter. And it also has a connotation to, to uh, uh, well, the scripture says, what does it say in Psalms? The entrance of thy word giveth light. Right? So the Lord says, I'm going to make your windows. I looked up this word agate, and it's, it's, a, it's a brilliance. It means a brilliance. So the Lord says, I'm going to, this, what I'm going to do for you, I'm going to make entrance ways of light into your life that are so brilliant that you'll have light and not darkness in your, in your soul. It's incredible what God says I'm doing. I'm doing. I'm working. I'm laying your foundation. In fact, when, if you go back to the sapphire, the reason I said the, the, when you look at the meaning of the word sapphire, it is a gem that's used for inscribing. That's what it is. It is a gem that is used to inscribe something on. God is inscribing on your life, on your foundation. Do you believe that? He's inscribing deep things in your life that will never go away. If you'll but let him. But just... The thing about it is, he's going to do it anyway. If we would just submit. You know, why do we want to, why do we want to fight against it and struggle against it when it could be, like that lady said... We would learn to a blessing. We would know the difference. A trial or a blessing. So the, the trials that the Lord is doing, he's, he's just like a skilled mason here. He's building this house with these inscribed foundations with beautiful colors for people to see, to look at that life and, and say, look at the shining jewels in that life. They have come from the master himself. The one who knows every stone to lay. He has given brilliant light into this life. He's had windows that let this rays of light of his, the light of his word come shining in day after day after day. And gives you the ability to see and to discern. Your foundation will tell a beautiful story. Do you believe that? Someday. Someday. Now, let me go farther and I'll be done. This was really, he says, I'll make your windows of agates the gates of carbuncles. When you look at that, when you start studying that, I believe it is speaking the gates where all decisions were made, the gates, the entrance way. But it also means the opening of the mind, the ability to think, the ability to process, the ability, the ability to discern. God said, I'll, I'm going to, just like a foundation is being laid, just like a house is being built, I'm building you. I'm building you. Your, and your borders will be all of pleasant stones. It, that word pleasant means delightful and pleasing. This is what really hit me hard. And the Lord is saying, because I'm doing this for you, one of the results is all your children. I realize that many people would argue the point with me and say, well, you're taking this out of context. This is speaking of the children of Israel. Well, go ahead and it is. I agree. But I'm telling you the application here. There's an application here that God does. I don't, if you don't want to believe it, that's fine. But I tell you, this hit me so hard. When you look this word children up, it means a son as a builder of the family name. It is what it means. A son as a builder of the, and it includes grandchildren. This made me want to shout. And it could also mean, listen, this is, if, if we allow the Lord, if we allow him to deal with us in this way and lay our, the foundation of our life, with stone after stone and yield to him, he, this will result in blessing of our children. It's pa it just passes. God can do it. Only God can do it. 
what really hit me, all your children shall be taught of the Lord. I don't know how that works. And great shall be the peace of your children. Don't you want that? There's nothing else that I want no more than all of my children to be taught of the Lord, my grandchildren to be taught of the Lord. I want them to be at peace. They all struggle. Our teenagers are struggle. They have struggles. They have inward struggles. Right now, our teenagers, they say, are facing the most inward turmoil of, of any generation. And I think, dear God, help the, our young people to... And that's one... And you young people, when we talk about doctrine and when I was talking about Romans and learning doctrinal truth, it's not for the sake of arguing. It's for the sake of blessing you. You know what God has given you. You're learning the truths of God's words. You're learning what God has given you. What's yours in Christ? What's yours to claim? Your teaching doctrine doesn't have to be bored. It's really delightful when you see that there are truths in God's words that you can embrace. And they're just like those building blocks that God puts into your life. He lays these stones, these beautiful stones, and there could be a doctrine of redemption and, 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 and uh, uh, propitiation and there are hard words that we... But these are all stones that God just lays in your life. And it, it, it provides for you a foundation, a sure foundation that God does. And he'll take... And, and, and teach our children. And great shall be the... In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression. For thou shalt not fear. And from terror for will not come near thee. We're reading where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, young men, were challenged by the king and said, Either you bow down to my image or you'll be burned in a fiery furnace. There was no fear. No fear. They said, we're not careful. We can answer you right, like, right off. We ain't doing it. You see, how can a young person, maybe teens, or be able to answer like that? It's because their foundation was laid. They had a foundation that God had built into their life prior to that. Through his word and through his truth and through the windows. They had windows of light in their life. They were able to discern and said, it doesn't matter, O king, what you decree. We'll not do it. God will deliver us. Whether or not he delivers us in death or he miraculously, nonetheless, he's going to deliver us. We're his children. It, when you have the, the certainty of God in your life, the fear goes away. There's a fight. Well, I'm, the worst fight in the world is a fight against fear. It really is. It's a horrible battle. Fear is, that when, you, when you decide that you're going to fight it head on, it's tough. You have those sleepless nights where you're facing it head on. And you, 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 it's almost like you lay hold on the Lord and say, Lord, I will not let you go until you bless me. I've got to have victory here. I've got to have victory over this. Lord, you've got to do it. And that's just one more engraving, see, in your stones. One more thing. One more beautiful stone in your life. One more victory. Jean and I were in, in, in behind this car today. She noticed it. I didn't notice it. You know, we're on the sticker on the license plate. It says, in God we trust. Well, this one said, in science we trust. i never seen it. Have you seen that? Why would they make such a sticker? And I, I was just hollering and running my mouth going down the road. But, you know, that'd be a case of a good argument, wouldn't it? I say, I'd say, I, I was trying to say, well... You're, you tell me first how your science uh, has caused you to trust. Go ahead. Explain to me. Explain to me what science has done for you in such a wonderful way that has caused you to be at peace and at rest and at full trust. Just give me those definitions. Give me your deliverances, maybe, if the person would talk. And then I could say to them, well, let me tell you the reason I trust God. This is what he's done for me. These are the deliverance that he's wrought in my life. Deliverance from these and this and this and just list them down. You don't have to have a complicated rebuttal. Just tell the truth. I don't know where that came from. Okay. Now I want to get one more thing done before I finish. Down to verse 16. 
and 17, the last two, I want you to notice what the Lord says. It's another behold that's inserted in here. So it means we ought to pay attention, right? It says, behold, I've created the smith. What's a smith? Metalsmith. Blacksmith. You ever seen a blacksmith shop? They got them on TV now. They make knives and all kinds of sorts of things. Forged is one of those TV shows. My brother's favorite show, he doesn't miss it, where they make these knives. And it's pretty interesting how they take the steel. And, and, but the Lord says this. Now this smith that bloweth the coals, you know what, the coal, what that does? They have to heat up. When we went recently to uh, right over here on Clack Road where an old home place was, a friend of mine that I did some work for, we found the old blacksmith shop. The, the, the roof had fallen in. We moved it, and I found the old bellows, the old the, the hand crank. The old ones just had a hand crank. You crank it, and it would create the wind, and you'd put it right. They just mortised, they just mortared it in with old mud, and then they had their uh, where it would that would just get that fire going hot, hot, hot. And that's how they could pound the steel and make the horseshoes or make whatever they're making hinges. I mean, they would make hinges. They'd make a blacksmith had to make about everything, but this smith. The, the Lord says, I've created him. And he blows the coals in the fire that bring forth an instrument for his work. And I've created the waster to destroy. Do you see that? The Lord says, I've created this smith and he's creating weapons. He's creating things that you would think are bad. But notice the next verse. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Why? God made, God made the guy that makes the weapons. You see. He's behind it all. He's behind the waster that destroys. That's hard to believe, isn't it? Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. There are tongues that come against you in, in judgment. There can be there can be things in your own mind that will come against you. It can be an outside tongue, but it could be it could be from your own heart. It can be from the enemy that will rise against you in judgment and con condemn you. You see. The. Uh, the Bible says that Joshua the high priest was standing and he, he was, he was, had filthy garments. And the Bible said that Satan was at his right hand to resist him. See, he was trying to resist him with words of condemnation. He's dirty. He's dirty. You're dirty. I'm dirty. We all have dirt. And the enemy will come against us. The tongue will come against us in condemnation and judgment. And the Lord says, no, you'll condemn it. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me. That's the only reason. That's the only way you can condemn the words, y'all, because we don't have nothing to claim, right? You take your place in the Lord. The word righteousness means rightness, uprightness, morally right, morally good. And the Lord says, their righteousness is of me. And that person that finds that rest and settles down into the place of the Lord, that is the person the weapons can come, they can come, and they can't hurt you. Because you're hidden. You are hidden in the righteousness of the Lord. All of those fiery darts of the wicked that come against you and fire at you and will bring you down in condemnation, God says, no, no. The, I create the, the waster. I create the weapons. No, no, it will not, it will not prosper against you. So, if you head down, if you are afflicted, tossed with tempest, and not comforted, then just behold. <laughs> right? So what he said? Behold. Three times in this scripture it said, Behold. So it's time to behold. Stop beholding yourself, stop beholding your, your own troubles sometimes you can't help it but but be, try to behold him try to behold he is the master mason working in your life building foundation stones in your life 
building these windows in your life, build, taking the sapphire and engraving your foundation with, with engraved marks that will never be taken away. Does anyone have a word? It's two minutes after seven. Anyone? Well, let's, let's pray together. Dear Father, we thank you for your word and your truth. Lord, we ask you to help us to embrace this truth, Lord, that so oftentimes my head is down. Lord, I confess that I focus so much on, these, on, the, on afflictions, Lord, of, of the heart. Lord, I pray your people, I pray strength for your people. Lord, I ask you that you'd infuse them with the ability to embrace your truth. I ask you, Father, that you'd shield them from the fiery darts of the wicked, that you would allow them to see that you're laying stone by stone, precious stone by stone foundations in their life. Lord, you haven't left them. You are working, Lord. You are working in their life. Just the, the fact that there's afflictions is a proof, Lord, that they belong to you. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. We thank you for your truth, Father. We thank you for it. Strengthen your people, we pray. Lord, I pray if someone online doesn't know you, I pray that they will come to know you today. Anyone, Father, oh God, help us. Help us to be the church you've called us to be. Help us to go forward with you. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.